Welcome to Snowflake Summit. I'm Howard Leo, community manager at Snowflake, and also the person responsible for Data Superheroes, the Data Superheroes program. I'm with Dan Galvan, a Snowflake data superhero and independent data architecture consultant. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Howard. Pleasure to be here. How has your, how's the Snowflake Summit experience been for you? It's been a great experience, not only community-wise, but to see, to hear a lot of the different announcements, like a big one would be the, uh, the NVIDIA partnership with Snowflake and so but we can get into that. All right, yeah, well, you're leading me there, so okay. I, you know, you know, Dan, you wrote, you've been, you wrote a lot of great resources about ChatGPT, uh, AI, all these things with Snow, Snowflake. I, I just want to ask, what got you interested in Snowflake and generative AI? When generative AI really exploded onto the scene last November, I really wanted to figure out how can the data professional benefit. So I actually started doing my own research in my capacity as a data architect. And what better way to learn about something than to blog about it, present on it. For example, in my Snowflake in a Nutshell blog series, I demonstrated how we can use generative AI to generate SQL for Snowflake. First iteration SQL as an accelerator. We can comment the code, we can optimize the code, and so on. And as another example, I recently presented at a data architecture conference, and I demonstrated how we can use generative AI to accelerate the data model delivery lifecycle using Snowflake as a target database or, well, platform. Right. So I would really recommend everyone to check out your, uh, the blogs on Medium. Uh, Thank you, yeah. Really great, uh, really great uh, resources. So we're obviously talking about AI, AI, AI. Everyone's talking about AI. And I just want to ask, what's been the highlight of you know, the three generative AI um, sessions or the moments, you know, who you've been speaking with here at Snowflake Summit? Of course. Well, like the list is actually long. It's very long. It That's is long. I'm saying three. Oh, three. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. so let's start with number one, which is, as mentioned, the NVIDIA Snowflake partnership, because as we all know, GPUs are required for the likes of LLM processing, and the, you know, they're, they're optimized for that type of workload. And um, another highlight is actually the Snowflake Snowpark container services, yep. okay? <laughs> because, um, and what's a container by the way? So a container is we get a piece of code, we identify all its dependencies, and we then can run that packaged uh, set of code and dependencies on different environments. And between the GPUs and the uh, Snowpark container services, we can actually, that, that will enable LLMs to run on Snowflake. Oh, and another one very quickly was, um, where in one of the keynotes, you remember, they actually demonstrated using a uh, just plain old English prompt yep. to generate a dynamic view, which then allows us to query on things like uh, you know, real-time data and so on. So maybe the top three. No, that's, no, that's perfect. I, I mean, everything was really exciting from the keynote to the demos. We're really, you know, I really saw this, year, this year's summit just really take off, especially with the announcement. And, well, I was surprised you didn't say one of these other sessions that we were talking about, and maybe kind of leads to the next question about, you know, you, I noticed in your writing you've been talking about kind of the considerations and the, the ethics of what we should be, uh, what any data architecture uh, professional should be considering when we're working with generative AI. I'm, f from your perspective, what are the main, um, you know, governance con considerations that mm -hmm. anyone working in this space should should consider? Of course. Well, there's. Again, the list is long, but let's keep it to, I'll try and keep it to three. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, go, so go it, yeah. we have, um, well, first of all, if LLMs are running on Snowflake, right, mm -hmm. we know where they are. Yes. So we can govern that. We can govern the inputs, we can govern the outputs, who has access, what prompts generate which responses, and that combined, like, what will happen? There's a, there's a ton of Snowflake governance functionality anyway, like robust access control, end-to-end mm -hmm. -end encryption, dynamic data masking, and oh, there was another announcement by the way, uh, query constraints, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. So basically what that means is we can have a table with data, but we can say you can't read from that table, but you can maybe aggregate like min, max, average on that table. And that has big benefits, or will have for, for data privacy, which all feeds into the generative AI conversation. Likewise, there, is, uh, there was recently a research paper published by a group from London, Oxford, Cambridge, 
Edinburgh and Toronto. And what they realised was, if uh, data, models can forget. Yeah. Models can forget, right? Mm. They can degrade. Right. What they discovered was, if data is um, generated by AI, and input it into another AI model, that's how the model, a, a, a way that the model can actually degrade. So what they discovered was, if it's human generated content, it can lead to a healthy model. AI generated content can lead to an unhealthy model. What better way to distinguish between AI versus human generated content than GPT-0, which runs on Streamlit. Right. And I just want to mention one other thing very quickly. Yes. Okay. So. We all know about the, you know, the recent congressional hearings on Capitol Hill where the generative AI community actually asked to be regulated. Okay? Mm -hmm. And likewise, in the European Union, down the tracks we have the EU AI Act. Right? So when those regulations do come down the tracks, the previous items I mentioned around Snowflake governance, what's, you know, with the newer services, uh, using GPT-0 and so on, that will lead to a stronger position when it comes to regulatory compliance. Now, everything that we need to be uh, considering when we're a data practitioner, and it's, it's just so exciting, we just don't want to get like misled, right? Or, you know, that pr especially with the privacy data, you know, something as important as that, feeding into, you know, an AI model, we, we got to be careful of that. So that's a really great point. So, Dan, kind of the open-ended question, right? The future, what's next, <laughs> right? Obviously, you, with the news that we announced and what everyone is building based off of Snowflake with the with these generative AI technology, what do you think is in the future for a data professional now? Yeah, of course, and I think that's a question that a lot of you know data professionals here are, are trying to figure out. So, look, the bottom line is the barrier to entry is dropping. Okay, so we saw in one of the keynotes the the example I gave of the you know the dynamic table being. The DDL, which is the SQL we use to create database objects, is generated by a pretty standard English prompt, and it'll support other languages as well. So um, the barrier to entry is dropping. We're going to have non-technical uh, business users querying the data using English and other languages, okay? Mm -hmm. But likewise, the data professional can now do more with less, like generate first iteration code, comment the code, optimize the code. Oh, and by the way, the Visual Studio Code Snowflake extension was very helpful in terms of actually me originally demonstrating that. Right, right. So, just very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, Keep it going. <laughs> thank you. But, but likewise, what's more important than ever for, for generative AI, as an example, is reliable, yep. relevant, and trustworthy data. And that all comes back to data quality management. And we also have data security. We also have you know, data privacy. And by the way, data modeling is a very effective way to manage data quality depending on the context. So, and I have some data modeling principles, but that's for another talk. But to summarize, right, when it comes to generative AI, who better to manage data quality, data security, you know, data privacy, yep. and the list is long. Who better than the data professional? Right, and really also speaks to that Snowflake one platform experience that we were also trying to talk about, right? All that held in one area, building, you know, everything, one journey, you would agree, right? Absolutely, I mean, we already, pre this conference, the, the different workloads that Snowflake could handle, and, you know, there's, like, the fact that LLMs are gonna run on Snowflake it's just so strong in terms of governance, as mentioned, regulation and so on. So yeah, it's very exciting times. Dan, we could keep talking about generative AI. <laughs> uh, clearly, there's so much to cover, but it was really great to just have you here at the conference and be able to you know, share with the community and share your learnings. Everyone, please uh, follow Dan on Twitter, on Medium, and uh, you can always find him in the community. So with that, we'll say uh, thank you, everyone, and check out the rest of the conference.